Time for a deep dive into the one issue that matters most in a capitalist democracy, money. This is Maggie and the Millionaires Talking Money, a joint production of the Maggie Dawn Show and the Patriotic Millionaires. Now, let's start talking money. Welcome, everybody. My name is Maggie Dawn. You're listening to the Maggie Dawn Show here on the Civic Media Radio Network. It is the three o'clock hour, and that means it is time to talk money. I love this segment. It satisfies my inner wonk. And it is especially satisfying because I get to talk to folks like my fabulous next guest. His name is George Gala. He is an activist, community organizer, and founder of Addition, a national worker advocacy organization. He's had a career of over three decades, and he's worked on everything from federal financial reform to local battles for better trash can. My kind of guy takes <laughs> all issues. His work has won billions for consumers and mortgage relief. He's helped reform housing programs and fought for community needs. I appreciate everything that, that you personally have been involved in, George. It is a proven track record of trying to make communities healthier and happier. So first, thank you. And thanks for making time. Um, tell us about Addition. It, yeah. w- what's its purpose? You're yeah. here in Wisconsin. What are you doing here? Tell folks sure. all about it. Yeah, we founded a bunch of organizers came together, founded kind of out of a belief we need a lot more people uh, on the side of good and that we grow through addition, not through subtraction. So like, you know, not dealing with anybody that, that doesn't think just like we do or division. So we, we just want to bring in more people. And we think there are a lot of people that need the power of community organizing. That's just proven it works. Everything you just said on air that I was part of winning was because we did this thing called community organizing. So we bring it to lots of places. And one of the focuses is small towns in the Midwest, because we think a lot of small towns and rural areas get left out of the conversation, don't get the support they need. So that's one of our big projects. And that's what's brought me brought me to Wisconsin. I I love that. And I have always believed in somebody that's worked at various levels of government and with community advocacy organizations and have myself done a march or two, hit a phone bank (laughs) or two, that that really uh, organizations like Addition and other advocacy, community advocacy organizations, you're basically trying to get people the information that they need to make choices and, and sort of translating it from sometimes what is very no. like wonky talk, right? And, and j- just getting it to people in digestible bites and like, hey, does this matter to you? If so, here's an outlet for making your voice about this issue known. Am I oversimplifying it? No. I've always viewed it as a bridge, right? I, th- I think it's totally a bridge. And I think the point around common sense language. Yes. Uh, You know, I think the nonprofit sector, sometimes the progressive sector, our political sectors make things way more complicated than they need to be. Um, So let's just use common sense language and talk to everyday people. And in Wisconsin, I think we uh, want an organizer on our team who grew up here, like started, went out and had 30 one on one conversations with folks in small towns and asked them, like, what are you most concerned about? And nine out of 10 said aging in a rural community. And what that meant for people ranged from transportation, from this rash of nursing home closures in the state to other things. Um, but it started with listening, actually, versus like, we got the solution. You just don't understand it. It's like, we're just like, we know how to organize. We know how to change things. What do you think needs to get changed? So I've been doing this model of listening to find the issue that people want to work on the most for 30 years. I've never had nine out of 10 people say the same issue. So we thought that was a big deal. But really, the kind of most front of mind for people was in a set of counties across the state, there was a push by conservative county boards to privatize county-owned nursing homes. So still today, 21 counties in Wisconsin own their own nursing home. It used to be a lot more. Many of them for 70 years, some for 120 years. And they are beloved institutions. Most of them are five-star rated. Uh, The staff have super high morale. There's a family feel to it. If you go to them, yes. People, you're like, I would love for my mom to live here. I just spent like three months trying to find assisted living for my mom. I was like, well, I found the best. It's in these it's these publicly owned nursing homes in Wisconsin. Um, and I didn't know that in the beginning, but there's a push to privatize them. And it stirred up a hornet's nest. Like small town seniors in St. Croix and Sauk County and Lincoln Co- County and Portage County have like flooded into county board meetings. I've been at them where they actually have to create an overflow room because yes. there's so many 
folks are showing up. People are marching in their local parades or driving their tractors in the local parades in support of their nursing home. And they're giving county board members hell every step of the way. Um, and sometimes they're winning and sometimes they're losing. And we thought we should we should help them out. It, it, it's an incredibly important question. And we know it, it, and it's incredibly important from a whole number of access points, if you will, George. What immediately pops out to my mind is the funding crisis that's facing so many counties and local governments in the state of Wisconsin that was brought about by the Republican gerrymandered state legislature basically draining local governments of the funds that they need to provide the services that the state mandates them to provide. So you have this massive funding crunch in local governments as you've got an aging population, right? It, it often healthcare is difficult to access in some of your more rural counties. And we know on the other end of the equation, you've got private equity firms and hedge funds snapping up this because the demand is so enormous. It's it's actually horrible. And you know, you made a great point there. I mean, this Wisconsin is an aging state. Yes. Uh, the number of Wisconsinites over the age of 85 is expected to double between now and, and 2040. Um, and that is obviously a kind of prime consumer for either in-home care or ass- assisted living centers. Um, so, and this issue is so hot to your point around private equity. Um, this Civic Media podcast is sponsored by- Chair Lena Khan actually came to Sauk County a couple weeks ago to meet with the folks at, that are trying to save the Sauk County Healthcare Center, which is a nursing home. Um, she actually didn't have like jurisdiction over the issue. Um, because it wasn't a big enough company trying to gobble this up, but she thought it was important enough that it was on eight days notice. She gave us eight days notice and she showed up, packed room, uh, great media, um, and all kinds of people showed up for that. And you've got, in the fight to protect these nursing homes from privatization, you got Democrats, independents, and Republicans working together. Like I've been in many meetings where Republicans are like, I did not vote for this. And so I think it's it's a very unique issue. Well, and hopefully a mobilizing one. This is one of those things like local government and these kinds of what I'm going to call always value add to community wellness, like whatever the issue is. They're just not partisan issues. We all have aging relatives. We will age. It's not a question of if, but when. Um, I've had economists on that talk about the care economy and the demands here. So important. I want to talk to you more about what you're doing in Wisconsin, specifically, so you've been in Sauk County. Tell us where your organization is. Where can people find out yeah. more if they want to connect? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. So we first got asked to come to Lincoln County, and which, you know, in Merrill is the biggest town. You know, it's a little, you know, not that much. You know, Merrill's about 20 minutes from, from Wausau. Um, and uh, the big push to privatize there. Um, I think the county board in many ways hell-bent on privatizing and we saw small town seniors just showing up in big numbers. And it was so interesting because this amazing mobilizations and leadership from senior citizens was happening at a time that like we witnessed it happening at a time, like the main conversation about older people was pretty negative. Yes. I mean, and I get it and like, and I'm glad Joe Biden stepped aside, but if, if you would turn on late night TV, it was just joke after joke. There were jokes about, you know, Trump or Biden getting inaugurated with Depends. Yes. And like, I get it, but I think there was collateral damage. So what I've experienced in Lincoln County is seniors 75, 80, 85, still organizing, uh, still fighting. One senior, Al Curtis, came to a county board meeting and gave the county board hell. He lived in Pinecrest, the nursing home they were trying to privatize. And he died a couple weeks later. And, and that can sound sad, but to me, that's beautiful. He was like, in the fight until the end. And I think for any of us that feel like maybe I'm on the sidelines too much, it's like, think about Al Curtis. We need to be Al Curtis, like fighting till the end. So, but, uh, you know, and so the other counties are St. Croix, St. Croix, people organized there. They succeeded in pushing back privatization. So they won a vote. So that has been tabled. So that is a victory. Um, And then in Sauk County, it's a real battle. And the county board has voted to sell their beloved Salt County Healthcare Center, been in the community for 120 years or something, you know, historically a five-star rated facility to a company called Aria Healthcare with a dismal track record. Um, mm. Like 710 deficiencies across their 12 nursing homes that are in Wisconsin. I mean, it's almost, we're talking like tons of bed sores and ulcers, um, people not having enough food or water, uh, getting, uh, 
Um, basically, if you tr raise any kind of grievance, you get in trouble at the nursing home and they're, they're trying to sell it to them. We are hoping the Department of Health Services will actually try to stop that sale. And that is why the FTC came to Sauk County. It's all of a whole, right? This is all part of this broader care economy discussion. But it, it, again, it reminds us that we all need people like Curtis. We all want to be a Curtis in our in our communities to stand up for what we need. My special guest for this episode of Maggie and the Millionaires Talking Money is George Gale. He is an activist and community organizer. He's the founder of an addition of addition, excuse me, a national worker advocacy organization. Organization. Um, where can folks find out more about addition specifically, George? Yeah, they can go a couple of places. Um, I think we might get a chance to talk about it, but we go to, to see each other.org. We launched a podcast about this work. Um, we actually follow the folks in Lincoln County. It's a blow by blow, kind of a serial style, you know, who done it kind of I style love it. podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it actually turned out really well, and you get to really fall in love with some great people. So I would say go there and then there are. Uh, uh, seniorvotersforcare.org would be two places to learn more about the work specific to, to Wisconsin. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome if you're just joining us. My name is Maggie Dawn, host of the Maggie Dawn Show here on the Civic Media Radio Network. And as it is the 3 to 3.30 block, it is our daily segment called Maggie and the Millionaires Talking Money. My special guest today, his name is George Gale. He is an activist, community organizer, and founder of Addition, a national working class advocacy organization. He has worked on basically a whole <laughs> huge gamut of issues that are important to most communities, focusing here in Wisconsin, organizing folks about the privatization of publicly owned nursing homes, which isn't something that we've got in southeastern Wisconsin or in Milwaukee County, but many of the rural counties do. What what is so I mean, other than getting a crappy vendor to run the nursing, <laughs> right, d d like decline in service, rising costs, it's it's an, a company, you know, they're operating for profit. What what about privatization? It is the thing that's concerning so many rural older people in Wisconsin yeah. these days. I mean, a couple of them you did just name, like, I, but I, there, there are more. Like, I think what people experience, and the data bears out, like, um, that staff morale, new ownership comes in and looks to cut costs, right, and figure out how to make more profits. Um, staff morale goes down, good staff leave. Um, and and staff that come aren't attracted to the place because they come there and they see it, it's a place in real trouble. Um, and then the residents start to experience a, a drop in quality of care. And this is the leading experts on long term care would say this. Even the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services say when publicly owned nursing homes are privatized, the quality of care goes down. So, like, that's a big deal. Like and I think and then you add on top of that, that the minute they're not making enough profit, they shut down and leave town. Yeah. Like, and you're in a rural community and suddenly I was in one meeting in one county. I can't even remember where, where some guy who was testifying before the county board started pounding on his fist. He's like, I don't want to live in Oshkosh. And it wasn't something against Oshkosh. Oshkosh was 90 minutes away. That was the nursing home he would need to go to because there wasn't anything else left. Um, so I think that and then you have families that have to drive an hour and a half to visit their their family member. And that means the the older person is less is more alone and there's less time spent together by family. But I would say then to add on top of that, if it's county owned, you have some leverage, some ability around the quality of care. You have, you can go to the county board and say, hey, this thing is not living up to, you know, its mission. It's not providing the quality of care. Once it becomes private, sure, you can organize and try, but you don't have the same leverage as local residents and citizens. So all of those reasons, lower quality of care, um, you know, likelihood that they might shut down and leave and the fact that you actually it's really hard to hold them accountable so i'd say those are the big the big ones yeah i just my family just went through this experience trying to find a placement for my my elderly uncle and he lived in montana they're just the homes he went from was in and out of i think three different homes in a fewer number of years because they were just closing he couldn't keep them open. Um, it was really 
a, oh. a, a scary and challenging time. Your organization recently polled folks in Wisconsin about nursing home privatization. What did what did your polling tell you? Yeah, we um, teamed up with the Heart Research Associates, a really kind of esteemed. Uh, polling organization and really around long-term care when we polled 800 people uh, 55 and over on long-term care issues and you know both around the privatization issue but more generally but the most popular solution among people over 55 in Wisconsin to the what people I think far and wide agreed was the long-term care crisis was mm -hmm. government support to, raise, to attract and retain long-term care workers in smaller towns and rural communities which I have to admit I wasn't expecting that to be the thing but i think the more you talk to folks they're like we just can't get workers to come here and uh so we got to figure out it's got to be really worth it so i thought that to me that was very hopeful but really interesting so 93 percent of people supported that measure it was the most popular solution on that we pulled on but 87 percent of republicans and 93 percent of independents chose that as the solution that <laughs> stood out to me um well yeah. That, that is really interesting, especially in light of the debate back and forth between Eric Hovde and Tammy Baldwin just this past Friday. Um, we're going to listen to some of that sound in, in the last half hour of this uh, show. But George, again, what is the name of the podcast and where can people find it? Sure, it's called To See Each Other and you can go to toseeeachother.org and that's like the website for the podcast, but it's it's everywhere you listen to podcasts. If you're somebody who likes to do things on YouTube, it's on YouTube, but it's called To See Each Other. To See Each Other. My special guest this half hour for this edition of Maggie and the Millionaires Talking Money is George Gala, an activist, community organizationer, organiz, organizer, I can speak, I promise, <laughs> and founder of Edition, a national working class advocacy organization um when i think about the this the universality of this particular issue right um and again this is not an if for every single one of us it's a but when whether we need care ourselves or whether our parents will or somebody else that we care about um and i just wanted to share with you t speaking to the importance of this we got a couple texters texting in john from west band saying and helping to clarify my earlier statement this is happening in southeastern wisconsin washington county sold their public nursing home in the last year the decision was made by that county board behind closed doors which always makes one wonder um and Michaela from West Bend also texting in and saying the private homes also don't have the same requirements for accepting Medicare. Yeah, you end up with the Cadillac yeah. homes where you got, have to be able to private pay some incredibly huge amount of money or uh, it's not so great if somebody isn't independently wealthy, which is a shame. One little thing I wanted to share with folks about the, the 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 county board meetings, often public bodies, when they're actually in the negotiation phase of the contract, like the very specific pricing and things like that, that won't be done in, in public. Thanks for listening to Maggie and the Millionaires Talking Money, a joint production of Civic Media and the Patriotic Millionaires. For more information, go to patrioticmillionaires.org. And be sure to tell your friends. The Patriotic Millionaires buy advertising across a number of civic media stations.